All right, so here's a screencast on systematics. Uh, we've talked, we started talking about taxonomy uh, and the issues therein. Systematics is a field of biology that attempts to organize life's diversity. We know how important diversity is for evolution, for um, for the existence of populations, and for the ramifications of a lack of diversity. Well, systematics tries to organize diversity. All right, it looks at certain things. Um, in life, it looks at a physical appearance. It has a lot to do with um, developing kind of family trees. All right, we're looking for relatedness of organisms. If we have a huge group of organisms, we're all related in some way. Systematics tries to delve in, tries to flesh out um, what's more related to one thing than the other. We, we we're related to slime molds, um, but we're obviously more closely related to uh, mammals. So, um, systematics draws up different phylogenetic trees, different cladograms. We're going to get into all these things uh, and how this whole thing works. But what role does it play in taxonomy? Well, taxonomy is a branch of systematics. And taxonomy uh, classifies things according to physical appearance, which is kind of their morphology. Um, which can get a little bit troublesome when you're mixing uh, homologous structures and analogous structures. For instance, uh, you might think that a flying insect would be closely related to a bird because of its morphology. So that can be a little bit troublesome. Uh, looks at anatomy and phys. It looks at molecular data, which is becoming much more widespread. It's very accurate, obviously. You can tell, uh, according to DNA, how closely related things are, how close they should be on a, uh, a phylogenetic tree. And these give, give us ideas on how these organisms evolved, um, what came from what other organisms. So this is extremely important in, in the big picture of, of common descent. Linnea, Linnea excuse me, came up with uh, our, our original system of taxonomy. We've been using his system for over 200 years. It seems to work. We did have to add the three domains, but he came up with the original hierarchies, and we're going with them. Some more key terms you're going to see when we're talking about uh, systematics is phylogeny. Phylogeny is an organism's evolutionary history. So where did it come from? Uh, what kind of organisms is it related with or with whom it's related? Um, that has to do with phylogeny. And when we're talking about phylogenetics, cladistics, same thing basically. Um, a product of phylogenetics is the phylogenetic tree. That's kind of the outcome. You get this um, product that shows interrelatedness, that shows common descent. That's a cladogram, and we're going to get into how to build a cladogram later on in the screencast. So let's keep moving. Uh, what is a cladogram? What is a phylogenetic tree? This is a cladogram. It's a diagram that shows evolutionary relationships and it's based on evolutionary homologies. So if this is our cladogram, we're kind of looking at this in terms of a time progression. If time is progressing this way, organisms that are down here on the cladogram are going to be more ancient. These organisms toward the top, and maybe I probably should have, have drawn this arrow more going upward, but organisms that are toward the end of the tree um, are more recent, perhaps they're even still alive today. Darwin was the first person to look at common descent, and what this shows us that is, is when you use a, a tree, you're implying common descent. You are implying that, well, these things that branched off had to have come from somewhere and you're showing these areas of divergence. So we're moving along in time and all of a sudden we had organisms diverge and gain some sort of different morphology that created a new species. So we had a speciation event here and then we had uh, some organisms continue on. So they didn't necessarily um, go extinct, but we had a speciation event which created a species A that no longer uh, recognized another species as a potential mate. New species formed here, time continues, we have another divergence where we have a speciation event, perhaps um, 
they're isolated somehow. Species B is created, species C up here. So the idea of common descent was proposed by Darwin. It's been accepted, and uh, it's a huge part of creating phylogenetic trees. Now, down at the very bottom, this would be the common ancestor for all these things. It's going to be down here. It's going to be a common ancestor for species A, B, and C. And um, you're going to use, in order to, to develop this, you're going to use homologies. You're going to use some traits, whatever you choose, whether it's the presence of uh, a two-chambered heart or a four-chambered heart or um, two to three germ layers, um, having a jaw. These would be different homologies, different traits that these organisms have in common that would show relatedness. Cladograms are made up of clades. So this is something similar to what was on the previous page. This is going to be your common ancestor here. We have divergence and two different groupings. Now, the clades, uh, I believe it's Latin for, for a branch, um, is going to be one individual organism and all of its descendants. So in this particular case, here's our organism. And here are all of its descendants. That would be a clade. Okay, right here, we're talking about a clade. Let's go up here. This organism, we've got this organism. And from this, you had a divergence. And now you have all of its descendants. This also would be a clade. But let's look at the green one. Our original organism is down here. Draw him in. Now, are all of his ancestors or all of his descendants in this green box? No, because we're missing some. We're missing some over here. So this technically would not be a clade. But when you're drawing cladograms, they're separated up into clades. You need to know how to recognize which are which. Um, this in one in particular would not be a clade because we're missing out on a few. How do you build a cladogram? What do you need? Well, before we do it, Here's what we need. We need organisms. So you might think, okay, we're going to use um, various species of whales, and we're going to try to see how they are, are related to one another. Um, you look at homologies. So uh, what traits do they have in common? What traits don't they have in common? Which organisms have more traits in common than other ones? And step three, these, these are our traits. All right, what, what's shared? What's unique? what's unique. Obviously those that are shared by um, two species that share more homologies, share more traits, are obviously going to be closely, more closely placed on the cladogram. And it's also important that you find an outgroup. It's important that you, uh, that you know kind of the beginning, what branched off first. The outgroup is the one that's going to be the most different. And when you find the one that's the most different, that's probably going to be the one that branched off the earliest. It's the most ancient species of your cladogram. And that's kind of going to give you a good jumping off point, the starting point for, for your cladogram. So as we go through organisms, homologies, what traits are we going to work with, and what's our outgroup? Well, here is a group of organisms along here. Here are our organisms. And along the top, these are our traits. These are our homologies that we're going to be working with. So what I'd like you to do is hit pause. I'd like you to try to fill this out. Now, if the organism has that particular trait, put a check. If it does not have that particular trait, put an X. We're going to try to develop um, an idea of relatedness, an idea of, 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 of shared descent, of shared homologies for these organisms. So hit pause, fill this out, and come back, and we'll talk about it. All right, I'm assuming you're back. Let's go through. A hagfish. Said I gave you a hint here that it's jawless. All right, so no jaws. We know that fish don't have lungs. They have gills for breathing. Fish don't have claws or nails. Mm -mm, no feathers. No fur or mammary glands. So it's not sharing any of these derived traits. How about a catfish? If you ever caught a catfish, yes, you can grab them by the jaws. They have jaws. Um, they are predatory fish. If you ever watch that 
show about noodling or whatever, um, they grab them by the jaws, or actually the fish grabs them. Fish don't have lungs. X, nope. No feathers. No fur. Salamander. Jaws? Yep. Salamanders live on land. They have lungs. They breathe air. They don't have claws or nails. No feathers. No fur or mammary glands. I guess I'm using axes, aren't I? Better stay consistent here. Uh, lizard. Jaws? Mm hmm. Lungs? Yep. Claws or nails? Yes. Feathers? No. No. A cardinal? Yes. To jaws. Indeed, it has lungs. You can hear a cardinal sing. Uh, claws and nails? Yes. Feathers? Yes. Every glands? No. A field mouse? Jaws? Mm-hmm. Lungs. Claws and nails. Feathers. No. And fur. Obviously it does. Chimpanzee. Jaws. Lungs. Nails. Feathers. Uh, and fur. So, from this, from this, um, and I guess I told you to use check marks and X's, but I guess I can go back through, check, check, just to be clear. I think that's all of them. All right. Now, what did we say? We need to find our out group. Which is the one that's the most different? Well, we can see that the hagfish does not share any of these traits. Okay, so it's going to be our out group. Doesn't have any of the hom these homologies. Doesn't share them with anything else. All right, and as you can see, it kind of shows us we have a we have a general um, idea of relatedness. All right, we've got a catfish showing one of these traits. We have a salamander showing two of them. A lizard, three. A cardinal, four. Field mouse, four. Chimpanzee. Uh, no, I shouldn't have done that, should I? Chimpanzee, four. So, um, what I'm getting at here is that the, the homologies um, that are shared by most of them, like um, lungs, like jaws. Those jaws are shared by one, two, three, four, five, six organisms. Lungs by five. Claws and nails by four. Those homologies, those traits that are shared by the most are general homologies, and the general homologies probably um, appeared first, appeared very ancient, way back when. Um, the ones that are shared by a very few are, are the special homologies. Those are the ones that emerge later on. Things like fur and mammary glands. Those would be the special homologies. Those are going to be later on, farther up our phylogenetic tree. Alright, so using this information, here's our cladogram. I'd like you, once again, hit pause, try to develop a cladogram according to this information. All right, I'm assuming you're back. Let's go through, let's do this. So, uh, once again, down here we have our common ancestor. All right, our origin. And we said that our outgroup was the hagfish. And the hag the outgroup is the one that's the most ancient, the one that's gonna branch off first. After the hagfish, what evolved? What trait? Remember the, the derived traits we were talking about? Well, 
the fish gained uh, jaws. So we've got here, we have the evolution of jaws. And what's next? The catfish. This was a general derived characteristic. All but one had jaws. So we're traveling along through time. No jaws until here. We have a divergence. We get catfish, which have jaws because they're past this, um, this breaking point where jaws occurred. We go along. What was one of our other general derived traits? Lungs. What had lungs? Well, fish don't have lungs, but amphibians do. Salamander. Salamander has lungs. Another one of our general derived traits. All right, next we had the evolution. Uh, a few of the, the, we had claws and nails. Hagfish, no jaws, no lungs, no claws and nails. We pro progress, jaws appear, catfish have them, but they don't have lungs. We progress, we have another divergence, salamanders, lungs, but no claws and nails. What do have claws and nails? What's next? The lizard. Reptiles have claws and nails. All right. Now, our other traits, we had feathers, and we had fur and mammary glands. Now, if I put feathers here, that would imply that everything to the right on this line then had feathers. So if I, if I put feathers here and then I had mice coming off, or I had... Um, a chimpanzee coming off, that's going to imply that they have feathers, but they don't. So, what happened? Well, we must have had some divergence somewhere else, not on this main line. We must have had one coming off here. We get feathers, and we get the cardinal. I hope that's clear. If I put feathers here, that's going to mean we have feathers. We know that we don't have feathers, but we do have fur and mammary glands because we're mammals. Oops, let's go back. So then we have field mouse and we have the chimp. All right, that's our cladogram. So hopefully you got something like that. Remember, it's important to find your out group because that's what you're going to branch off first. You keep going with your general derived characteristics. Those that are shared by many of them are going to be at the bottom. Those derived characteristics are, that are more specialized are going to be more towards the top. And that's how hopefully uh, this whole thing works out.